Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University, a one-stop shop to learn all the technologies. Um, at this time, we are talking about uh, schedulers. I have already covered FIFO scheduler and uh, phase scheduler. As part of this video, I'll be covering the third type of scheduler called capacity scheduler. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, um, start looking into it. I'm going to share my screen. OK, now you should be able to see my screen. And I'm going on to uh, this page where I have a Cloudera cluster installed. And again, scheduler is part of YARN and MapReduce 2. So we, when it comes to Cloudera, you have to go to this location and click on Configuration. And you can see that by default, it, it is using phase scheduler um, instead of cap capacity or FIFO. As I have explained earlier, FIFO scheduler um, actually um, runs in the form of a queue. So once you submit a uh, job, until the job, uh, uh, the required capacity for that job is less than the actual capacity of the cluster, uh, new, no new job can be uh, able to run. So I have demonstrated using uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet also yesterday. So let me open Excel. OK. And uh, we will uh, uh, recap that same thing here because um, a capacity scheduler uses the same concept of uh, FIFO scheduler. It's, it's extension to FIFO scheduler. And we will see that how it works in a moment. So for that, let me start a job real quick. So I'm in the, uh, let me connect to, let me open a new tab and connect to the cluster. And no need to run the job, I will directly go ahead. Here we will give the job ID, start time. Uh, actual capacity. Uh, application master. Required capacity. Pending, running. Completed. Okay, so I'm making everything bold. Here, job ID is one, and let's say it started at uh, 3 p.m. And the actual capacity of the cluster is only 16, uh, 16 tasks. So at any point in time, the cluster can only run 16 tasks on my four node cluster, four uh, data node and node manager cluster. And the application master will take one for this job. And required capacity for the job which we try to van is 368. Uh, if you you can go back to the videos and check what I have van and how uh, it requests 360 mappers and eight reducers. And to begin with, the most of them will be in pending, and zero will be in running, and zero will be in completed within no time. Um, as we have uh, 16 total capacity and one is taken by application master, uh, 15 can run simultaneously. So we can use, um, it will quickly change uh, to this number, 15 for running, uh, 353 for pending, and completed is 0. OK? Now, uh, even after 15 minutes, when half of the uh, tasks are completed, even if we submit a new job, that new job will not get any resources until uh, the pending plus running for this job is uh, uh, pending plus running plus application master for this job is less than the actual capacity. That's the behavior of the FIFO scheduler. It, uh, um, the subsequent jobs will only get uh, uh, the uh, that uh, will only get the capacity when already running jobs um, application master plus pending plus running is less than the actual capacity of the cluster. Until then, subsequent jobs will not get any resources. So that's the behavior of the FIFO scheduler. When it comes to phase scheduler, it will try to uh, share the resources uh, across all the jobs that are running at a particular point in time. Whatever is being completed uh, for the existing jobs will be redistributed across multiple jobs um, uh, at a given point in time. 
so the advantage of using phase scheduler is phase scheduler will get um, uh, 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 will allocate the resources fairly for all the jobs um, at a point uh, that are running at a point in time so uh, the shorter uh, the small jobs need not wait until the larger job is completely done okay and the side effect of that is your uh, uh, long running jobs will take um, uh, more time uh, than uh, uh, usual so that's the caveat when it comes to phase scheduler it, it try to complete the short uh, short running jobs as quickly as possible while impacting the long running jobs um, uh, that are running on the cluster so capacity scheduler uh, and fifo scheduler um, uh, so capacity scheduler is just extension to fifo scheduler and uh, in, uh, the major difference between capacity scheduler and fifo scheduler is that capacity scheduler will have predefined queues so let's say you have 100% capacity okay which is 1000 tasks in the cluster so uh, in capacity scheduler scheduler you can set predefined queues saying that 25% will go to one queue 50 percent will go to another queue and another 25 the remaining 25 percent will go to third queue okay like that we can distribute the uh, capacity and this one will get 250 capacity this one will get 500 capacity so you can give the names to these queues okay so Let's say this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3. Q1 will get 250 capacity, Q2 will get 500 capacity, and Q3 will get 250 capacity. And then while running the jobs, you can tell in which queue the job should run. So if, let's say you, you want to run the jobs in Q2, so within that queue, which have 500 capacity, it will run using FIFO scheduler, okay? So this is how it will, Try to distribute the resources across multiple queues, um, but each queue is predefined, and uh, that queue will behave uh, itself as a different cluster uh, from the other ones. So, uh, right now, instead of having 100% uh, uh, capacity, we have distributed into 25%, 50%, and 25% ratios 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratios, and, um, uh, and then within each queue, it will try to execute the jobs in the form of FIFO scheduler. Okay, and with, with 16 capacity, this one will get 8, this one will get 4, this one will get 4. And um, if we submit this job um, in Q2, uh, to begin with, uh, uh, for Q2, the actual capacity is only 8. One will be taken by the application master, and 368 is the required capacity. And initially, it will go to 7 running and 361 pending. And then um, uh, it will slowly uh, 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 complete the running jobs and move the completed jobs to completed. And at any point in time, at max, it can run uh, seven uh, tasks plus application masters. Um, or, um, or the capacity of the cluster minus application masters will be the running capacity. Uh, and then if we have the subsequent jobs uh, uh, submitted, until this uh, the uh, the actual capacity until the uh, pending plus uh, uh, running plus application master the number of pending plus running plus application master of the already running jobs uh, uh, is less than actual capacity until then the subsequent jobs will not get any resources so it's sim exactly same as fifo scheduler only different differences now we have multiple queues which will behave uh, uh, independently to each other okay so uh, one of the disadvantages with capacity scheduler compared to phase scheduler is uh, at any point in time and the usage uh, on the cluster need not be 100 percent for example if you are only submitting uh, jobs related to q2 uh, then un um, it will only use uh, uh, 50 percent of the capacity instead of using 100 percent of the capacity unlike in phase scheduler you will only define minimum uh, uh, capacity for each pool or queue okay so it will try to uh, allocate whatever is available and if there are jobs that are coming into multiple queues 
uh, and if one queue is 25 percent and the other queue is 75 percent it will try to uh, um, uh, apply that rule only when there is a contention until then um, it will try to use 100 percent capacity on the cluster so at any point in time in phase scheduler uh, it will try to use more capacity in the cluster than the capacity scheduler so that's the major difference between a phase scheduler and capacity scheduler now to enable capacity scheduler uh, if you are using cloudera you just have to uh, select this one and then you have to use this capacity scheduler configuration advanced configuration snippet safety valve okay here you have to provide the xml file which will have the queues so in this you, you will actually define the queues and um, uh, you can have sub queues also where you will actually define the capacity so we will see an example google capacity scheduler queues example and hit enter actually this is the this is the one which you can use sorry for the background noise i think kids are making a lot of noise outside so this document you can check for the way capacity scheduler works you can see uh, create and configure yarn capacity scheduler queues and uh, let me show the example okay so google hdpca you go to here you can say capacity scheduler and you can click on this one so this is the link and here you can see setting up queues and you can see this is how it will look like so there will be a default queue called root under which we can create support queue engineering queue marketing queue and again the those sub queues can have multiple sub queues like this so you can say what are the root queues so, uh, support engineering and marketing and then you will say add dot scheduler dot capacity dot support dot queues uh, in uh, engineering dot queues and marketing queues and you can give the sub queues and uh, for each queue you can actually uh, assign the capacity okay for example you can actually log into one of the nodes where the resource manager is running 243 and uh, when you use cloudera the configuration files will be under var run cloudera scm agent process and here we have to go to this directory which have the latest uh, parameter files for resource manager sorry it should not be view it should be cd ls hyphen ltr you should see capacity scheduler dot xml file and here you can see there is only one queue root queue which is the default and capacity is 100 percent and default capacity is 100 percent um, you can actually have other queues as part of the root queues and then you can create the sub queues and for each each queue you can give the capacity okay uh, you can distribute 25 percent 50 percent 25 percent or whatever capacity you want to give so this is how capacity scheduler looks like and for the certification perspective uh, for cloudera certified uh, associate um, sorry cloudera certified uh, administrator of apache hadoop you have to understand all the available um, uh, schedulers uh, what are uh, what is the default one for uh, uh, plain vanilla apache hadoop the default uh, um, uh, the default uh, the scheduler is FIFO scheduler for the cloud error the default scheduler is phase scheduler and you need to understand the differences between FIFO phase and capacity scheduler and uh, it has very good weightage uh, for uh, for the amount of topics uh, it has it has 10 percent of weightage so out of 60 questions you can expect 10 questions uh, from the schedulers itself and it is very very important even though 
uh, the um, and the and the amount of uh, uh, topics that needs to be covered is relatively small uh, it's very very important uh, for you to understand and it can come handy even as part of the performance tuning when you actually support the clusters as an administrator later that being said i hope you are enjoying the content on the channel if you like this video please click on the like button if you want to provide the feedback please use the comment section of the video if you think i missed something please let me know i will try to uh, uh, upload a uh, add on video to this and uh, on top of that if you want to discuss further about big data certifications please join my linkedin groups called itversity hyphen big data or itversity hyphen certifications and finally uh, please visit my website www.itversity.com and subscribe to my channel uh, uh, itversity on youtube and uh, you can stay connected with me by clicking on stay connected link on my website and finally if you like the content please donate by using either my website or my uh, channel uh, so that i can come up with more and more content like this over time thank you bye